Joe Bevins and welcome back. Today, something a little different in the studio. Now, this particular painting is actually quite a nice painting. I'm quite happy with it. I painted it outdoors on plein air and uh, I've got a video of that so I'll link it in the description below so you can check it out. Now, the reason I've brought this painting in today is because ideally, myself, I like to paint one go, wet on wet, on site, and that's it, the painting's finished. But occasionally when you get the picture home and you look at it, and to tell you the truth, I haven't actually gotten this painting out of the painting box for the last two months or whenever I painted it. So I'm setting new eyes on it. This is something I haven't seen for a while, but it's good because I've painted a lot of other paintings between now and then. So this picture is not as fresh and as important to me as it was when I did it. So I can be more objective probably. I get the painting out of the box, I have a look at it and I say, yes, I really like it, it's great. But I can just see a couple of things that maybe would improve it. And this is where you have to be careful when you're painting touch-ups in the studio. Sure, I could just get a photo now and look at it and just start finishing and refining and the painting would, would become more and more realistic, more and more finished. But at the same time, every single mark I put on, I'd also be losing that spontaneity of the original painting, the freshness. Now when I work on site, I'm working very fast, but I'm also trying to work really accurately. So I'm not trying to be broad, I'm just trying to work really accurately, but in that time frame I have to work fast to get it all done. So you almost get a perfect imperfection, if you like. And what I mean by that is, you're trying to be perfect, but within the time frame, you haven't quite got time to perfect everything and you're constantly working around the canvas. By the time you're finished, there's almost a perfect imperfection. There's something really nice about that. That can easily be lost now with the reworks. What I need to do now is just go with the original concept that I thought on the day. Look at the painting and just think, well, all right, what do I see now? Maybe I could just pull up one or two bits just to improve that original impression that original concept and just pull it out a little bit more and that's what I'm going to try and do today okay so basically the painting is about obviously beautiful reflections this is very softly and thinly painted all with a palette knife and up here there's bigger chunks and whatever else so there's a bit of a contrast going on between soft reflections and chunkiness and what I want to do now is maybe just soften that even a little bit more, take it a little bit further so that's even more soft. This is even chunkier in some ways. Maybe just pull a couple of extra branches out because I can see it maybe just needs a tad of detail here and there to pull the picture out a bit. All right, so what I've got here is oil paint. Now when I paint direct from the subject, I'm using straight paint, straight oil paint. Now the thing is the paint's quite thick and so what can be a bit of a problem now is, as you're reworking, even though the paint's dry, underneath in the thick areas, it's only skinned, like it's not 100% dry. That can be a problem putting thick paint back over that because that can start cracking or whatever. But the idea that I've come up with and seems to work well is I use a quick dry medium, which is kind of like a paint medium but transparent. Mix that with the paint and what that does, that kind of makes the paint dry slightly more rubbery, so it's a bit more flexible, a bit like a silicon. So as the underneath underlayers, the original painting is still drying over the next six months or whatever, this top layer is quite flexible and won't crack. It can move even when it's completely dry. So that works well. I could go ahead and put a massive chunk of thick paint over the top of that and still it'll all flex and move as the underpainting is drying. Right, let's go, okay. I've also got a little bit of medium there, just slow, mainly linseed oil. Just a slow drying medium, a fat medium, so it's mainly just oil, so it's quite thick and slow drying. I might mix a little bit of that with the uh, fast dry medium and the paint that's already got the pre-mixed fast dry medium in, into the water and stuff, because what that'll do is really soften with the oil, it'll give it a really soft effect. Okay, I think that's about it. Now I'll stand back and have a look what I'm going to actually do. Alright, now I've got the brush out. I might start with just softening that water a little bit. 
Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, the important part here is also to, also to match the colours. If you start got using slightly different colours than you were using on the day, well, it's just going to stand out, which you don't want to do. You want it to blend beautifully. Okay. So I can see that that water definitely has yellow ochre and uh, burnt sienna in it. I know that for two reasons. One, because it looks like it does, and two, because I mixed it <laughs> a couple of months ago, so I remember. All right, so what have we got? Now, like I said, I'll get some of this rinse, uh, this oil, thick, slow-growing medium, mixed with a bit of that fast-growing medium. Give it a real flexibility. Let's just have a look. I just want to feel that colour. So that's needs to be a lot darker than that. So I'm going a bit more burnt sienna. Maybe even a bit of cobalt blue to really set it off. I'm trying to match that colour, get a darker tone because it is a darker tone, I can see that. Okay, that's getting a better tone, but the colour's slightly off, so we've got to go more yellow ochre. Key it down a bit more. This is the fun part, getting it matching the colours again. You've got to match those colours. Like I said. Okay. Twang a little green thrift flecked in. It's all half mixed this water. I can see bits of uh, green and I can see bits of yellow ochre. Because I work so quick on, on site, I'm uh, half mixing all the colours and I can see that that's what's going on here. Now I've gone a little bit too far there, so that's cool. What I'm going to do is just get a bit of this uh, paper towel and just pull it up a bit like that. Just soften it with that. You can use a rag, a bit of towel, a bit of whatever. And what I'm doing here, like I said, is softening, softening, softening. Okay. Now I'll grab a palette knife. I can see this reflection just here. Is from that tree, obviously. It just needs to be maybe a tad thicker on that side. So, some white and cobalt blue, a bit of magenta, a bit of burnt sienna to make a kind of neutral grey colour. Let's have a look what it is. Yep, got a bit of green in that reflection too, so bung that in. Like I said, it's all about matching matching those colours from the original painting. And it's also about softening when it comes to reflection, so I'm going to use my finger there. Use my finger there, why not? Uh, okay, so we get into those neutral colours. I can see a bit of that here. it off a little bit. That's good. Get a bit more of that reflective colour that was there. Take it out a bit further. Use the finger. Pull down to soften. Stand back and have a look. That's good, right? Use the finger again. The finger seems to be working. So does the paper. You use whatever works. Stand back and have a look. Okay. Just putting a bit of reflection there from that tree. Same deal. Maybe use the finger again. Pull through with the paper. Get rid of a little bit here that wasn't supposed to be there. It's working alright, just keep softening that with my finger a bit. You can use anything, brush, finger, piece of rag, whatever. Okay, so now, we'll just stand back and have a look again. Before I do, I think I'll just soften that a bit. You can go Whatever it takes to make it softer, that way and that way is a good way, because what it does is 
gives you the, um, it does a downward mark, so the reflections and the cross also gives the feeling of breeze on the water. But when you do them both together, it just also softens them nicely. Maybe that paddock there just needs to be a bit more green in that because it's a slightly different tone here. Just introducing that paddock a little more in this area. I can straight away see that that's too much, so the old paper towel pull through. Always thinking about softening because that is water softness. And it's coming along now, it needs a slightly lighter tone in the reflection. That's a lighter tone just here, so a little bit of that into the water there won't hurt. Just rub that in, go across again. I'm actually going to get a clean brush with nothing on it to really soften. This brush has got nothing on it, it's just softening that paint that I've already put on, really get it reflective and soft. Now, I'm not sure if you can see, but with these palette knife marks that I've put in here, as I was accenting in here, I've put quite a long mark, which is connected to another mark, which almost corresponds with this mark here. I'm seeing a very long straight line, and that's not necessarily what I want, because in a painting, your eyes will always follow a long straight line. So what's going on is I can see there's a bit of this going on, and that's not what I want. So I want to shorten the marks, and I can do that by going against the form. So what I've already built in there, I can mix similar colors and go this way, almost to put a stopper to it, like a buffer. And that'll stop your eyes from drifting along that line. Okay, so in saying that, We have yellow ochre and white because it's the grass. There's just a tiny bit of uh, alizarin crimson in that. Let's just have a look at that. I'll start here, making it that way. It's also not going to hurt because, I mean, grassy paddocks obviously have grass on them. So there's going to be marks this way where the grass grows. So it's definitely not going to hurt to put marks that way instead of that way. I'll stand back and have a look. Finishing the painting off like this, it should be a lot more looking and a lot less putting, which is totally the opposite of what you do when you're on site. When you're on site, you're pretty much just going flat stick the whole time, but when you're here, it's all about observation and not wrecking it. Okay, so let's have a look. A bit lighter, a bit more white, yellow ochre. trying that. I won't necessarily leave it there, I just want to feel what it's like. That's the thing, the good thing, the painting's already dry underneath because I've left it a few months. So if I want to put something on like that and just try it, I can easily just get the turpsy rag and take it off, which is great. If you try and rework a painting when it's still too fresh, it's dry, you know what I'm saying, but only just dry. You start doing that and get the turpsy rag and try and wipe it off, what you're going to do is start pulling away at the underlayers and start getting the painting all kind of the skin ripping and stuff, you don't want that. So the best thing, like I said, if you want fresh eyes is always to leave it. Leave it for ages. Get on with other paintings, forget about it. Come back later and look at it. It's dry enough to rework. You're more objective about what's going on. It's less important if you mess it up in your mind because you've done heaps of other paintings. This is not the most important painting to you anymore because there's a lot of other ones you've done. With that all combined, it's a lot better. Okay, a bit of burnt sienna with that yellow ochre. Going by feel here. <laughs> I'm normally left handed, but I'm on it. I'll go this way with that. And the reason I've done that is because 
well it doesn't really matter it's just a broad mark so I can use that hand but what I'm trying to do is break that edge and stop the flow that way now like I said I'll stand back and have a look because it's all about looking we just put now what I'm going to do is get the palette knife find a bit of paper paper towel Because this painting is done completely with a palette knife, it was painted on site with a knife, it's good to do most of the work with a knife to finish it, otherwise it'll start to look, I'll just rub through a little bit, otherwise it'll start to look like it doesn't match the original painting if you're not using the same techniques. bit more white in that and just trying to get that mark right that's a bit more spontaneous that's good just putting a few refining details to really in the focal areas to pull your eyes into it like I said though it's all about looking and getting away don't just go bang 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 okay it's done Keep getting going, going back, <laughs> keep going back and having a look because every mark, like I said, if you overdo it, will wreck the painting. It's all about just getting the right amount of marks, simple, and improving the original concept on the day. Alright, so this area here is nice. These dark shadows are quite good. I'm liking that and I'm liking the reflective quality there, but I feel like I could almost put, because it's in an area where your eye is getting drawn, you could almost put a little bit more detail there just to make it pop. Just mixing up a bit of white, yellow ochre and stuff, a bit of red, whatever. Just to have a look. Just a couple of fine lines like that to really make that area contrast the softness. Remember I said it's about softness here? A couple of sharp marks against the softness will really make the paintings pop because the softness is making that hard line really hard. And to make this soft area look softer, if you've got a hard line, you're contrasting. So that hard line is actually going to help the reflection look softer. magenta half mixed building up a bit of this trunk color here just gonna stick a few sticks and whatever in just like I said always feeling the subject here's the reflection of it just out of focus because it's a reflection it doesn't have the full power Maybe a tad more there. Just to get the draftsmanship of that tree a little better. Yep. Bit of softness, so it blends with the original colours. Let's have a look. Get that finger. Pull them together so that they actually blend with each other. The original marks underneath I can see, so I'm trying to harmonise with that, but with the new colour, which is ever so slightly brighter on the side to reflect the sky a dot's always a good one too like a dot in a painting in the focal area will always stand out because everything's sort of broad and uh, suggested but a dot is so refined it contrasts beautifully with that softness Pulling your eyes into that area. A bit more burnt sienna. I can see that colour's not quite matching there. There's a bit more burnt sienna in that, so I'm just adding it in now. Making it look like it was done quickly and without thought, like on the day. <laughs> there was thought going on, believe me, but 
give it the same speed and feel of, of working on location flat out. Right, she's starting to do a little bit more stuff like I want now. This is an interesting painting. This one, uh, painting. This is an interesting brush. This one is called a rigger. Like you can see just how long the hairs are. Look at that. It's fantastic for creating branches like the Australian bush. A lot of those gum trees have a lot of bends and twists like so. And it's hard to achieve that with the palette knife because palette knife's a straight edge. So Putting a few of those trunks in with this is actually a very good thing. I'll just get some of these colours. What are we mixing up here? Right. A bit more blue and burnt sienna in that grey mix. Red, white to lighten it. Loading the brush up with all half mixed colours. Let's just have a look what we've got here. Yep, so what this does is improves the draftsmanship of some of those branches. Stick it on random but accurate. Stand back or lean back. <laughs> Probably notice in my paintings quite often I go like this. And that's how I can almost go back without having to walk. So it's a good way to just get a feeling of what it looks like from further back when you're actually still standing up close. Just half mixing colours there. It just hears all out of focus, which is great, because that's the background. What happens? Well, first I'll match the tone better. What happens if you actually start to put some in-focus foliage over the top? What you get is, because like I said earlier, the contrasts always make a painting, out of focus there, as soon as you put a few in-focus branches, that background will drop away and the foreground will come up. So these foreground branches will pop forward, the background will recede. I'm just feeling areas. When you're painting the branches too, it's also a good idea not to just have a continual line, like break it up. So you've got, instead of it just being constantly hitting the canvas and making a continual line, have it hitting the canvas, and next when it drops away and comes back on, drops away, and what that does, it gives the illusion of light and shadow, and also just breaks everything up and makes it more impressionistic. Yeah, a lot of that, let's go, just thicken that a bit. I mean, we've got a bit more white, yellow ochre, white, thicken it up a bit, not too much, yeah I can see that, hang on, tone it down a bit, I'm just trying to feel what's right for the occasion, stand back and have a look. So like I said, you don't want to overdo this stuff. I could keep on going and get carried away with this whole rigger brush and next minute before I know where I am, I've changed the whole painting. I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do now is I've found an area, hang on. I've just found a spot I think is a bit too much. So I'm just going to get a bit of turps on the old finger and the rag here. And just take some of that off. Same here, like take some of the stuff I just did then away. So I've got a blend of, yeah, the new stuff is there and the next minute, no, it's not. Take a bit of it away. Yeah, thin that one off, get rid of it. This is good, get the finger. That's good, yeah, that works. Finger again. In and out of focus, lost and found, hard and soft. Just pull that little bit out of focus. We just don't want to make all this stuff too obvious and too... I don't want it to attract too much attention. It's all about feeling it. Take it in and out of focus. 
get rid of some of that. It's all about feeling the subject, hard and soft, lost and found. Make sure everything blends, goes in and out of focus. The whole painting's in and out of focus, so I'm continually working with that concept. Just, uh, all right, I've just got a little bit of straight cad red there, beautiful, strong stuff. Just going to mix a bit of that fast dry medium with it. Looks like the rest of the painting. Okay, I'll stand back again. Alright, so this painting, this painting is about, it was obviously an overcast day I painted it, right? So instead of having a direct sunlight, the high level cloud that's all in the background becomes the light source because it's so bright, it's almost like a silhouette. That's the light, it's everywhere. Now, so when you're doing that, quite often the light source, you can uh, make it stronger and make it feel more like the sky is alive and lighting up into your eyes by sometimes putting a, a red line where the two meet. Like if you've got the light right here and then you've got a silhouette of shadow here, putting a red line is actually, your eyes see that. Like it, if you really focus on it, it'll go away. But if there's a bright light and when it meets the shadow, quite often you get this sharp red line. If you put it on, I'll just try putting it on, see what happens. Well, for one, you're getting a good excuse to use red in a greenish landscape, which is always going to work because they're complementary colours, red against green. And two, you're also mimicking what your eyes see in nature, rather than just what a camera sees. Always working around, never repeating yourself, never overworking. Just softening some of that stuff I just put in there earlier. Okay, so now I'll just get a bit of the white. I'm just going to work with the sky here for a minute. A bit of the white, a tiny bit of yellow ochre, half mixed with that white. Not too much yellow ochre. Just want to have a look here. Put it where that red is, just to kind of blend it so it's not too wet on dry. You've got a bit more wet on wet. Same time with that same light tone, I might just lightly touch here and there. So what I'm doing now is I'm obviously reintroducing the sky, which is behind this foliage back into the picture. Softened because the light is looking into the light, the silhouette of the bright sky. Increase the draftsmanship with some by making some of those branches thinner with the edge of this palette knife. It's all about feel. It's always about a bit of light there maybe. It's always about feeling the composition and not getting too carried away like I said earlier. Right, I'm just uh, still going with this whole sky thing at the moment. Just getting back, it feels like maybe I could put a little bit more here to soften. By painting the negative space, I'm actually adding more refinement to the foliage by painting the sky behind it. The sky is actually bringing out the foliage. Instead of repainting the foliage to finish it, you paint the negative space, which is the sky behind it, and that starts adding detail to the foliage. But you've always got to be careful not to overdo these things. Okay. Well, that is creating too much attention, so that's going to be softened. All right, I'll stand back. Have a look. Another trick too is uh, I've got the studio lights going at the moment. 
it's always good to see it in different lights. So what I might do is just flick the lights off for a minute so I can see when I stand back what it looks like in a dimmer light. That is a good way sometimes to let your eyes see it freshly because you're seeing it in a new light, literally. I'll go flick the light off, let's have a look. Hopefully the camera can still see, but with that softer light I can just kind of Sometimes the light's a bit harsh, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes the light's a bit harsh, so I can see in this softer light, it's a little bit easier to not have to get back so far and see the big impression. Right, I'll turn that light on in a minute so you can see what I'm doing, but I just want to improve the draftsmanship of that for a minute. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of smudging. Hang on. There's a lot of smudging that's got to go on with these uh, these reworks because the painting is wet on wet initially. There's a there's a softness in that wet on wet. It's so easy when you're reworking to lose that whole soft feel because the new paint is wet on dry. You've got to try and keep it like the original concept, wet on wet. I'm actually finding it, where we just put that paint in there, I'm actually finding it a lot easier to see in this duller light, believe it or not, but uh, I'm not sure if you're finding it as easy, so I might turn the light on in a minute. Like I said, by picking out those edges, I'm actually improving the draftsmanship of everything in the background here. Yeah, let's put that like so. Get this rag again and reintroduce the draftsmanship to the edge by taking some of that off. Look at that, that's it. What do we got here? So, what's going on here is this background stuff with this sky is really starting to bring up all those foreground trunks. By cleaning the edge with the white, I'm actually bringing the trunks into better draftsmanship, which is making the painting, giving the illusion that the painting is more finished. Which in some ways I guess it is more finished, but... Alright. Maybe just a bit here, soften. Hang on. Oops, a bit more white with that mix. Neutral sort of muddy tone. Rag. Soften. Soften even more. Maybe just introduce a bit of light here because there is a reflection there that says that it's got to be reflecting something from above. There you go, look at that. Going by feel, going by feel. I'm using a lot of finger painting today. <laughs> I don't know why, I don't always do that, but for some reason I'm feeling like this background needs a lot of that sort of soft finger stuff. Get this edge here a bit softer. Drawn a bit better. I think the light even though it's fairly dull in here now, I think you can see, you seem to be able to see from what I'm seeing, I can see a kind of image of what you're seeing. I think it's alright. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, what are we doing here? A couple more fine lines and marks, just going by feel. Sometimes I overdo it and then take it away. Sometimes you think, I like what's going on there. This is in your mind. So, what happens if I exaggerate that? So you just try it. 
walk back. If you realize you've gone too far, then come back and take it away. But sometimes that's how you can get an extra sting in the painting that you couldn't get before because you take, you see something in the work and you just take it a little step further to see if you can bring a bit more of it out. These refining marks in here are very important to give the illusion of detail in this focal area. Contrast, like I said, the softness. Right, I'll stand back and have a look at that. Okay, okay. Let's blend that so it's not too obviously a new introduced thing. Make it look like it was done on the day. Make it all in the same theme. That same random energy of painting by the seat of your pants on location when you haven't got enough time. Keep it the same. Now, all this water is beautiful and soft and downwards. I almost feel like I could maybe put a little scoop of wind across the surface and that could work or it could wreck everything, but it could be something consider. Hang on, let me just soften this a bit. Just trying to blend those two. Alright, so if I did do that, I'd get a smaller brush. Where are we? I might be able to do it. Just go like this with a loaded brush and just... Whoosh. I don't know, it could work. And it could mess up. But there could be something in it. And feel the colour go down a bit. I'm just trying to get the colour right first because it's going to be done in one mark so you can't have it the wrong colour because let's just me feel it's feeling. Yeah. Just feeling those colours. Right, are we ready? <laughs> Good. Now, pull it out of focus. Cross. Even softer, just get it soft and directly across the work. It's really contrast it downward. Well, it may have worked, it may not have, who knows. Why don't we do a tiny bit here just to work out if I'm Doing the right thing or not. Yep, good. Soften directly across, transparent. Right, let's have a look at that. Now there's quite a light tone just here. I might just introduce that a little bit more into this, the reflection. Obviously it's a reflection, so it's a key down version. But at the same time, it's got to have a little bit of what the original. That's alright, yeah. Almost getting rid of it, but leaving it there, if you know what I mean. Just to add that and see what. Yeah, you can see that softness that along these just put a slight ripple across the water and it really contrasts all the downward marks I'm not so sure I need heaps of it here though Let's have a look I'm looking at what you're seeing in there I could maybe a little bit there okay what are we doing instead of going up again just Right. Add a spot there for who knows why, it just feels like it needs one. Rub that out of focus, that original earlier mark I put there, I think it needs to be a bit softer. Same with here, this original upward mark here just needs a little bit of breaking up so it's 
hard and soft, lost and found, in and out of focus that is. Alright, palette knife. Getting there, getting there. This is a bit hard, this mark here. Uh, soften it again. Like I said, I, I don't know why I'm using so much finger painting today. It's not always what I do. I guess because I'm really trying to get a softness and sometimes the finger is really good for that. So, uh, what do we got? Yep. The thing is, where do you stop? This branch here, I might just Soften again, in and out of focus, soft, lost and found. Just drawing a few of those trunks on the ground. There's a lot of fallen down trees lying on the ground, just basically turning back into earth. Sticking a few things in like that. Just feeling it, always just feeling the composition. There's softness there. Stand back another look. It's quite interesting doing reworks pretty much live because uh, normally what I would be doing is I'd be spending a lot longer just like looking for ages and then putting one mark because I don't want to bore you senseless, I'm working a lot quicker. And that might actually be a good thing because it's a bit more like working on site. I haven't got time to over-intellectualise and over-wreck it. So we'll see how it goes. I'll have another look. Bit of a mark there. Whoops. Whoops, too much. Take away. Yeah, maybe that'll work. Let me have another look. All right, well, I've made a few more marks. Hopefully I've done something positive rather than negative, like we were saying earlier. You can uh, obviously do the wrong thing and overwork it and wreck it, but I think in some ways what I've done is just reinforced my original concept on the day without going overboard and also trying to make the marks that I've put on now look like they were done on the day and that's actually the hardest part because when you put marks on now wet on dry they look so different than putting wet on wet doesn't mean it can't be done but you just need to really make sure you match the colors properly and try and use the same spontaneity of the day like when you're there working fast try and keep that frame of mind going as you're doing the reworks but at the same time just refining that bit all right I think that's about it I've softened here I've added some detail I've broken up this line by putting some verticals and stopping it here as well created a bit of a glow with just a one or two red highlights not much introduced a bit more draftsmanship over the top of the out of focus for the foliage so the foliage comes so the branches come off the background foliage a little bit of wind across the water just to break up all those downward marks always about contrast to add drama I think I might just leave the painting alone now I think that's about it like obviously I could keep on going and wreck it but I'm not going to do that I'm going to stop and uh what I might do is uh, get the camera off and let you have a closer look at what's being done. All right, well, there you go, something a bit different. Studio reworks on major plein air paintings. Okay, no worries, thank you. Very hard to see what I've done in here. There's a bit of reflection coming in from the south light behind me. 
So I've got to kind of stand on a bit of a weird angle so we're not getting a reflection back in the camera. Okay, now you can see what I've done here. I've added some real fine lines and dots and what that is about is to totally contrast this softness of water. And like I said, I added a little bit more softness just here to contrast the uh, chunkiness. Now up here, like I said, you can see that that almost looks like it's glowing because that extra slight red mark is just all of a sudden really made a bit of a bit of a light source. It's like you can feel the sky is bright and is silhouetting. Added these branches, just one or two, not too many. You can see the uh, the rigger how it's really good for introducing those fine random lines and how I'm pulling them in and out of focus. You can see that I drew it in with the rigger, got my finger and softened it off here. But that hard branch against the soft background really pops. And of course, like I said earlier, these are the wind across the water diagonally when you've got all the downward marks of the reflections is a, just a nice contrast and touch. Through here is where I had all those straight palette knife marks that could have been potentially leading the eye off. But like what I said, like I did, is break it up with a vertical mark against the horizontal to stop it. Also here, just here I threw in just a little vertical bunk. There you go. Just refined that trunk. We had this major trunk here. The reflection wasn't quite lined up, so I just added a little bit more on the side just to, just to balance it. But I had to soften it, of course, because it's in the water. And like I said, that real softness against these real fine, sharp marks that I added. That's the way to get the picture to pop. All right, I'll get back and see if we can see this. There you go. Okay, well that's about it, there you go. Now let me know if you like this new style of video and I will do more. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell. That way you'll be made aware of any new video as I upload it. Until next time, we'll see you later.